So, it's time to share my story. Well, at least the part of it where I was married and, back then, thought I was happy. It's a pretty typical tale, really, nothing new for those who might hear it. But for me, it was a first. After finishing college, I married a woman a few years older than me, five years, to be exact. Her name was Hazel. She hadn't been married before, but she had a past relationship that never quite wrapped up. The guy she was with cheated on her right before their wedding, and they split up. As for me, I'd never been married, and I didn't really have any serious relationships either. I wasn't much of a romantic by nature. I lived my life, letting the advances of the many women who showed interest in me pass by unnoticed. But when it was time to settle down, I did. Hazel seemed different from the rest, calm, modest, even a little mysterious. She always carried herself with such dignity, and that's what drew me in. At that point, I had a pretty clear vision for my future. Everything was mapped out. First thing on the list, buying an apartment. A spacious three-bedroom place in a new building with a mortgage and a renovation to boot. To handle the financial load, I took a job as a truck driver for a transport company. I worked like crazy, often disappearing on long trips for weeks, even months at a time. Hazel was happy with our life, and she trusted me completely, and I made sure she didn't feel like she was missing out on anything. We had what seemed like the perfect life, a family without quarrels. There really wasn't any reason for arguments, and there was barely time for them anyway. Time just kept passing by, things got done, problems got solved. We got the apartment, renovated it. I kept working. Hazel chipped in too. She got a job at a clothing store close by. But then, everything started to fall apart. Honestly, I couldn't even pinpoint exactly when my peaceful life began to unravel. It all started one ordinary morning, just before I was about to head off on another trip. Good morning. Aren't you leaving today? My wife asked, walking into the kitchen while I was having breakfast. Yeah, I'm leaving at 11 o'clock. What are you up to? I replied, more out of habit than curiosity. I already knew what her day would look like. She'd text me, send me pictures. I've been working all day. And in the evening, I'm going to my sister's to hang out a little. She and her husband go on a bus trip around the region. Stella will also join us, if her husband allows her. Do you want to come with us? She offered. A bus tour. Are you serious? I've got two weeks of thrilling trips ahead of me, with the steering wheel and the open road about to drive me mad. Let's skip that idea and I'll be on a plane this weekend. Looks like it's not meant to be. In my free time, I mostly did household chores and sometimes went to work. To be honest, she didn't work that much. If she had four days a week, then it was a good income. It was more like a fairy tale than a real job. The days began to merge into a monotonous haze. But then something unexpected happened in my company and several of my flights were cancelled. After four painful working days, I finally dragged myself home. To be honest, the schedule change brought me relief. On the second day, I felt completely unwell. I caught some kind of infection, my throat hurt, and my nose wouldn't stop flowing. On the fourth day, I had some rather unpleasant and unexpected symptoms that led me straight to the doctor. Let me spare you the details of the examination and get straight to the point. It turned out that I had contracted a venereal disease. It didn't make sense to me. I don't overstep the bounds of what is allowed, and I knew that my wife didn't do it either. She wasn't like that. So, how did this happen? What's going to happen now? What will she think of me, and how will she be able to prove her innocence? There was no avoiding a scandal, that was quite clear. 
It was around noon when I rushed out to the pharmacy near the house and bumped into my wife's sister on the way in. Hey Sophia, how was your trip? I asked, trying to sound casual and hide the obvious concern I felt. Sophia stopped dead in her tracks. Maybe she didn't hear me, or maybe she didn't even understand the question. Well, it was the weekend for an excursion, right? You and your husband went. Mine went on the trip with you, didn't she? Yes. Your wife and I haven't spoken in two weeks, and I don't think we'll ever speak again, she replied slowly, her gaze shifting behind me with a look that made my stomach churn. I turned around. There was Hazel, walking toward us, completely engrossed in something on her phone. In that moment, my mind started racing with terrible thoughts. Hazel, what's going on here? I'm not the type to freeze up in unexpected situations. So, without thinking, I grabbed the phone from her hands and started scrolling through it. She chased after me, shouting, Give it back, don't. But it was too late. I'd already seen everything I needed to see. The gallery was filled with pictures of a man I knew. It was the owner of the store where Hazel worked. I'll say this much. My wife had certainly been keeping herself busy in my absence. Restaurants, clubs, saunas, swimming pools, even a resort. That's where she'd been spending her weekends. And those pictures she'd sent me from the tour near the old church. Turns out, they weren't what I'd been led to believe. She'd been posing in front of that church, yes, but with him. And so I met my wife at home. What kind of excursions do you go on? I shouted at my wife, and there was fury in my voice. I wonder how you spend your time. You even brought me a souvenir. I pointed to the unbuttoned fly of her clothes. Asher, this is the sleeve of the jacket. Please forgive me. Who did you say you didn't have anything with? What is his real name? I asked, noticing several other men in the photos on her phone. I wanted to know if they had anything to do with her. Don't lie to me. Just tell me the truth. I demanded, even though I already knew I wouldn't get an answer. At that moment, I didn't care. I was so furious that I grabbed her phone with hands shaking with anger and threw it on the floor with all my strength. It shattered into pieces. The next day, I filed for divorce after talking to her sister. Later, her sister told me how she caught Hazel in our house, in our bed, which led to an argument between them. She told me a lot more. Obviously, while I was away, Hazel was far from faithful to me. She had two lovers, one of whom I really knew, so I had no doubt that filing for divorce was the right decision. Hazel tried to contact me for weeks, calling, texting, begging for forgiveness. But I couldn't see any point in forgiving her and starting over. It was over. A year later, I remarried and found happiness with my new wife. Every now and then, I hear about Hazel from her sister, especially when I run into her on the street. Hazel also married one of her lovers, but according to her sister, calling their marriage happy would be a stretch. <laughs>